So here's the question. What things are we going to have to recalculate each time? This thing is sitting on a table in your physics lecture hall. If something is in outer space, we will tell you. Otherwise, you should assume that it is near the surface of the Earth. Okay, so most people say two. So that says we have to recalculate the stretch of the spring because that will have changed once the objects move. That means the force will have changed. Force by the Earth on the block doesn't change significantly, even if it moves up and down a little bit. The momentum will change, position will change. So we have to recalculate everything. But the, let's do, let's just talk about what we have to do to calculate the net force in step one, and then we'll let a computer do it for us. So we're going to have two things going on. We've got the gravitational force due to the Earth, and we have some upward force due to the spring. And so the net force is going to be the sum of those two forces. So F net is, well, zero in the x direction. In the y direction, it's going to be negative y, and it's going to be the mass times g, so it's going to be negative, what do we, 0.06 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram plus, okay, it's going to be an upward force by the spring. The stretch is negative 0.1 meter, and L hat uh, points up, and we have this minus sign that makes it come out right, so we have a plus uh, 8 newtons per meter times a 0.1 meter. So nothing in the, and that, this comes out to, this comes out to minus 0.588 newtons. And I think, which one comes, yes. And this comes out to uh, plus 0.8 newtons. And so the net force is upward. Um, and I think it comes out to a plus point two twelve. So we have zero two twelve zero newtons. Okay. So let's actually ask a computer to do this for us so we can see what it's gonna do here. Uh, all right. Okay, so here we have a block on a spring, and it's going to, we're going to see that we're going to step through this calculation, taking one-tenth of a second steps, and so that's the net force that we just calculated. And currently it's at rest. So it's going to have delta P is going to be F net delta T. This times 0.1 second. That's going to be the change of momentum. And so we're adding, starting with momentum zero, we're adding delta P. We should get a net momentum upward. So we use that to determine the final velocity. And we let it move. And it made a graph showing... This is y versus time. So that's initial y. Then it updated the position based on that final velocity and said that's, that's where it is. Okay, now we calculate the net force. And it looks like it's downward. All right. 
So the spring is less compressed. So the spring is exerting a much smaller upward force, which means the Earth's gravitational force is greater. So now the momentum, we have a delta P downward, don't we? So the momentum, we add that to the momentum now, and we get momentum that's still up but smaller. So it's still going to go up in that next time step. Now the spring's actually stretched. <laughs> and so the net force is pretty big down because the spring and the earth are both pulling down. And so the new momentum, the delta P was big enough to flip the direction of momentum. So in the next time step, it's going to move down. And that's three tenths of a second. So it, but it, it, it's not beautiful, but it looks okay. And now we can keep going because the computer doesn't care. So new force, new momentum, new position, new force. Oh, now it's upward because the spring's compressed again. So momentum. Wow, pretty small, huh? New position, moved down, but just a tiny bit. Big force upward, new momentum, update position. And so we keep doing this. So this actually goes for, ten, for one second in tenth second steps. And we see that the graph of y versus time does go up and down. Okay, so we predicted something reasonable. How could we improve it? It looks pretty jaggedy. Make a time smaller time step? Okay, let's let's ask the program to take a hundredth of a second time steps instead of a tenth. And we won't we will tell it not to ask us to click every time. Okay, so now it's gonna do the same calculation, taking a hundredth of a second time steps, but taking a hundred of them instead of ten tenth of a second time steps. So remember that the blue arrow is the current momentum and the red arrow is the current net force. Okay, so that looks that looks nice, right? Looks nice, smooth oscillations. So what did you see? So which of these things was true? Read the question, and then maybe you want to watch it again. Watch the animation again. Okay, so watch it one more time. And uh, so is the momentum always in the same direction as the force? No. When the net force is zero, is the momentum also zero? When the momentum's zero, is the net force, it, when, the, when the, the, the momentum's greatest, is the force greatest? So none of the above. None of the above. 